In today's tutorial, we're going to look at how to use Spline Dynamics to create something like this. Hello, this is Joseph from Joe Concepts. I'm happy to come with a new tutorial today. Alright, so in this tutorial, we're going to look at how to create a Spline Dynamics that we looked at in the previous week and to create a similar a project like this, where you have an object tied to the end of the rope and you have a um, Dynamics attached to that. But before we go into the tutorial, please I would like you to like my tutorials and share it because it helps me. And if you are not subscribed to my channel, please do subscribe because I make similar tutorials like this. All right, so I'm going to illustrate by going to the front view, create a spline object, and, and go back to perspective view. So this object is here. Then right click on the spline object, go to cinema 4D, sorry, go to hair tag, go to spline dynamics, and this is here. So if you play, it falls down. So what I want is we want to pin this down. So we're going to select this um, spline object, go to just select this point I want to pin down. So go to the spline dynamics tag, go to the properties, and under this fix, click on set. This color will change to purple, so meaning that is fixed. So if you click here, this falls. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to make this B spline. Now, like I said in the previous, uh, I, I, in my tutorial about um, spline dynamics, if you haven't seen that, you could just go and check that. I talked about that more extensive, extensively. So I'm going to stop this for a while. Then select everything, right click, select every point, right click and go to subdivide. I'm going to subdivide this to 50 so we have enough points. And also, if you remember, if you check that video, I have to, this fixed point would have been reset. So I'm going to select this point again and fix it. So this is now back. So if I play this now, it falls and you see this um, elastic effect of that. So I'm going to make this 300. So the next thing I'm going to do is to create the object that I want this thing to be at. So I'm going to create this circle object, sphere object, and make it um, maybe 0 0.2 meters. All right. So what I want to do is I want to make this top here to be fixed with this. There are two ways we can go about that. It is either so. Let me, it's either you um, you convert this to editable format. Once you convert that to editable format, you go to you go to your axis mode and just click move this to this point here. That is the first way of doing that. And the second method is. So that's the first thing you need to do. You need to first start change your axis to this top because this is where you want to be fixed to this place. So the second thing you do is to create a null object. And if you know that it, the radius of this sphere is 0 0.2, right? So for me to move the null object at this top, I'm going to go to the coordinates, y axis 0 0.2. So it's going to also be at the top. Then we can now make this one a child of that so this is used if you want to keep your objects parametric you don't want to convert that to a detailed format so any of this option you can use so all you need to do is just make sure you have that point at the top for both of them so any options works so so i could just delete this and work with this one here and bring this back to zero so now for us to do this, we need to bring this point here to this so that by the time it falls, this interacts and is tied to this edge. So for us to do that, we have to select this point and know the position of the point or the index value of this point. So every time you create an object, the points on this object have index value. So the index value in this plan, in the case of this plan is when you were creating it. Remember when I created this, I started from here and ended here. So the index value, when I started, this will be zero and this will be 
what it goes when it increases. Remember, I've increased the number of points. So that means this is going to be 0, 1, 2, 3, and so on and so forth. So how can we see this index value to be sure of it? So if you select this spline and you go to the structure, it's going to give you all the point value. So you see all the index values here. So how can you see that? If I click on this 0, you notice that 0 is highlighted. If I click on 1, start seeing what is highlighting here. So this is index. This point is at index value 11. And this last one here is this index value 50. Remember, we added, we converted it to 50 points. So what I need is this index value 0. So that, you should put that in mind. So once I'm done with that, the next thing I'm going to do is to just create an object that I'm going to add an expresso tab to. So don't worry about expresso. It's not really what we want to do here is not really much. It's a very simple expresso tab. So we're going to bring this, uh, sorry, we don't need that. We're going to bring this spline object into this, then bring the object we want it to interact with. So we need to look for a way to bring this point value and tie to tie these two objects together. And that can be done by right-clicking here, go to node, new node, expresso, general, I'm going to see point. So the point has some options. So for Expresso, the blue section is more like the input section, while this um, red section is the output section. So you need to have an input value here and an output value that is feeding input of this. So we know, so this object is, this point object is yellow because it doesn't know which object to work on. So we need to tell Cinema 4D that we want this point tag to read this plan. So for us to do that, we click on the output section of this spline, choose object. So we are going to plug this object to this object section. Notice this turns points. Now it's reading this spline. So the next thing is for us to set the index points or the point index. Remember, when we checked, the point index was zero, right? So that means we need to make sure the parameter index value is zero. So once we are done with that, the next thing is to now plug that index point that we have chosen the position of that point you know this is a position we need to point this position to the global position of this object so we will click on this position and go to the input section let go we go to coordinate global and global position as, we, as soon as we do that this fair jumps here that's just everything that you need to for that so as soon as this thing jumps and you play you notice this falls and this is always tied to it. It will always be tied to that point wherever it goes. So even if we create another object to be a collider to this and right click add a hair tag hair collider and you move this, notice what happens. Can you see that? Notice what happens. So this continues and that. So that is how I did that and this is just more like a simplified way of how to do that. So if you feel this was helpful, please give, give me a thumbs up. If you feel um, you like this, also share the video and subscribe if you are new to this channel because I make similar tutorials to this. So do have a wonderful day and God bless you. Bye.